Welcome in everybody to our first ever City Skylines 2 gameplay video. We're going to kick things off here right away using the Waterway Pass map and coming up with a name. But before we dive into the game, I need to give a huge, huge shout out to Colossal Order and Paradox for giving me early access to the game. It's been so much fun. I feel so lucky being such a smaller creator to be able to have access to this. So a huge thank you to everybody over there. So here we are spamming the randomizer button, trying to find a city name that I like. And it starts like all great cities. Keep on randomizing until something resonates with you. Old Monroe, sounds good to me. We're going with unlimited money on and natural disasters on. Natural disasters because why not? Unlimited money because my play style, it's not, you know, I wanna be able to show all of you everything. And while there's other creators that can absolutely do that with money on, it's not my wheelhouse. We're only allowed 30 minutes for this video, so I wanted to give myself as much creative freedom as possible to give you the best quality video that I can. So we're going to come in here, showcase the map. This is Waterway Pass, and we're going to bring the flavors of rural Canada A to all of you. I had seen lots of comments on Reddit and online discussing how they want to see if it's possible or want to see, you know, maps that start with out a highway interchange so i'm gonna spam down these wind turbines here which all give you xp xp is used to level up uh, as you go so it levels up through your sort of your your tree and gets us to tiny village the reason why i spammed them down to get us to tiny village right off the bat is this right here we unlock three tiles i can now get access to the interchange come in and destroy it no interchanges here we're living rural I'm going to come in, clear all of this stuff up, get that interchange out of the heckin' way, and we're going to explore how this game handles traffic for small towns. If I drive a highway through the city as the main street, how is the game going to handle that? We know that traffic was a big, big point of City Skylines 1, something that a lot of people struggled with. How does this game handle it? when we take a more realistic approach here to how cities are now that have, you know, bad traffic, right? So we're going to clear all of this up, get it all out of the way so that we can drive our beautiful highway avenue through it. Now, this takes inspiration from a couple places, um, the area around Valley View and Kamloops and definitely Salmon Arm, where highways sort of play an interesting role through the hearts of the cities. And the main goal for this, you can actually get decent traffic. Of course, we'll see as the population goes on. But the main goal behind this is to give the highway as much priority as possible to alleviate traffic and congestion. So we're coming in with these avenue roads and you do get a four lane road right off the bat. Now, a lot more options as well too, which is really cool. And honestly, their approach of using XP instead of population for it to help level up and unlock stuff is so much better. I found it a lot more enjoyable, honestly, and it's something that I could see myself using in the future. I'm a modded detailer, and so it's something where Unlockal has just been a part of my life for so long. But the way that this game progresses, I actually found myself kind of wishing City Skylines 1 was like this when I was playing, wishing that I you know, had this much fun playing without Unlock All. It's really, really good. They absolutely nailed it. Look at all these asymmetrical options you get as well, too. Like, this is all stuff just from the first milestone, which is really easy to hit. Well, you can hit it like I did, spam down seven wind turbines. Or you can, uh, you know, come in and, and do the... Um, um, you know, do it, do it manually over time and wait and be patient. Now, with this road that I'm going to do here, we're going to eventually get it connected up here so that they're all the same road. But what you're actually going to see happen is this road that I'm drawing out now is actually going to be the wrong way. Don't worry, I come in and I fix that up eventually, so do not panic because it absolutely is the, the, the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> What's really cool too is that as you can see there with the intersections, the markings happen automatically. So it's kind of like a built-in intersection marking tool. It happens right off the bat without you needing to do anything. This is really cool. I've been a big fan of intersection marking tool, but I always felt like it added so much time to the overall builds to the point where in recent months here, I've actually just stopped using it because it just took too much time. And that's no shade to the mod. The mod's absolutely phenomenal. It just was too time consuming for me. 
So having that built in is really cool. I know some people will be hoping that there's a way to turn it off for uh, more detailed players, but so far I'm loving it. It saves me time and I quite enjoy how it looks overall as an end product. So we're going to stretch out our grid here, and since we're using zone, and I'm going to stick to a more gridded city. And this is just so I can get that perfect grid and line the buildings up. Um, when it comes to, like, breaking the grid, I prefer having the option to find it and hand-placing buildings. I always find I get a much more realistic look than zoning. And that's kind of the case with this game. I still feel that zoning is somewhat unrealistic still. Um, and isn't the best method. It would have been really cool if they did include something like find it into the game so that you can base your own play style there's some people that have done really cool stuff with gr like with zoning but i still think that hand placing stuff in certain areas you don't have to hand place it everywhere you know suburbs zone away i still feel hand placing is much more realistic and it's still the case for city skylines 2 here so we're going to take a frontage road approach and we're going to make sure that nothing is kind of putting unnecessary traffic onto our highway so we're gonna draw out our two lane road here get the lines adjusted a little bit there like look at those markings is that so cool the markings are like absolutely gorgeous as well too like it really really looks good so we'll draw our roads there and the commercial is going to come up just to the tip there without actually being on the highway again this is to alleviate unnecessary traffic on the highway give the highway right of way and as much space between intersections as possible to avoid congestion and traffic we're going to begin some suburban zoning here with smaller plots of land. Um, you know, only three wide, but decent spaces in between it. Lots of, um, you know, front yard space, right? <laughs> so come in here, get those all zoned out. And they, it looks really nice. I'm really happy with the assets as well, too. It does feel like there's a really good variety. The big thing I'll say as well, too, about the assets that you get in the game is that they feel like assets that... If in three years, this game has a full Steam Workshop ca uh, catalog, you know, tons of assets, tons of mods, I won't stop using the vanilla assets. They just feel so... Uh, they, they look beautiful. They have an awesome atmosphere to it. Like, the atmosphere in this game is absolutely stunning. When it's raining, it feels like it's raining. When it's sunny and hot, it feels like a sunny and hot day. They really did so well with the atmosphere here. So I have issues with getting the zone to uh, the zoning commercial zoning to stay on Empire Street instead of Birdsong Street. Going to come in with some row houses first, but I think I'm going to actually end up adjusting the commercial zoning as well too, because you can see it's still going on Birdsong Street. But I want to keep that area clear. The row houses look absolutely gorgeous. They are so well done. Yeah, here it comes. I'm going to keep trying with the bulldozer. I realize, you know what? It's not going to behave, so I'm just going to unzone you. And there it goes. And now we forget our problems. And then I do the same here, knowing that it'll probably do the same issue. <laughs> so, the row houses that you get in this game, as well as the wide variety of mixed-use residential, they are absolutely stunning assets. Oh, and to talk about this, here is the medical clinic. You know, talking about stunning assets. And you'll see what I'm doing there. Those are called building upgrades, a new thing for City Skylines 2. And with building upgrades, you'll want to budget space for it. That's why I upgraded the buildings right away. And you'll see me doing that. That's so I can show you guys what comes with it, what the building upgrades are. But it's also something that I think I'm going to continue doing unless I know that I just want it to be a smaller building because you have to budget that some of these buildings are extra space that will destroy stuff. And if you have a road there, you'll have to destroy it. Um, so it's something to take in consideration. Understand that the buildings do have upgrades and they will take up extra space as well. I'm going to stretch that road out and that water tower asset. How gorgeous is that? You saw it in the opening uh, intro there as well, too. It is such a beautiful asset. And, oh, man, I can't wait to see... You know, something similar to, to Palavin from uh, Overcharged Egg using that water tower. A, a, you know, Murky Coast uh, sequel. <laughs> so I'm going to come in here with a new asset for City Skylines 2, the Transformer Station. And with the Transformer Station, watch how the cables look when they attach. We're going to drag it across the highway here. Look at those cables. How cool is that? Oh, 
beautiful and it gives enough space that you can have traffic go under those cables without hitting it or glitching through it which is so freaking cool to see ah here it is i notice that the road is not correct we got to get that sorted it is not in the right spot so I'm going to drag that out there. And again, the markings at the intersection auto filling are awesome. Now, another thing that's really cool is a lot of these assets and actually not even a lot. All of the assets come pre detailed now with beautiful, beautiful detailing. And the cool thing about that is I am a detailed player, but I detail because a lot of the assets don't come with anything and they feel empty without detailing. Now I can plop all this stuff down and I found myself becoming less of a detailer or at least detailing more things like parks and whatnot in this game. And more like the, even the road detailing there slapped some trees in, added that green median. Like it just feels a lot faster now, which is really, really cool. And I'm so excited for the future of this game. Now those row houses, man, they are so hot. <laughs> Look at those assets, eh? Like there's just this atmosphere to it. Oh, they are so, so beautiful. Such good assets. And as you can see, they even come with the back lots detailed out as well too. So, so cool to see that. And again, it's going to save a lot of time for detailers. Uh, myself included, because I only detailed because I, I felt that if it wasn't detailed, it wasn't good enough for me. And so now I can just come in and, and place those buildings, which is really, really cool to see. We're going to make some further expanse here now. And this is going to be for the industry zone. So a big thing that needs to be considered in City Skylines 2 is that wind factors in. With industrial things, you know, whether it be a um, uh, just industrial zoning, garbage, whatever it is, wind pollution is a thing. Or like air pollution. <laughs> wind pollution. Air pollution is a thing. So you got to consider the wind before placing your zoned industry so that it doesn't pollute your citizens. Now, a big thing that I got from upgrading, and you can do this within your tree, which is access tiny village in the bottom left there, is the road tool to turn off lights and turn off crosswalks. That's right. You can disable crosswalks, disable the traffic lights, all such cool things, all in uh, base game, which is really cool. The crosswalks one is my favorite. So we're gonna add a one lane off ramp there for the highway. And by not doing traffic lights at this intersection, again, it's gonna help with our traffic flow and avoid congestion by having too many traffic lights so close together. So we're gonna come in with this road and try to replicate what we did this time in reverse. Now, you can do these to every point. I'm doing them on two spots, but you could do it all over um, so that the whole thing has ones. We'll probably come in and add those. Turn off the crossing walks there. Turn off the traffic lights so that, again, it's steady flow on and off of the highway for traffic. Because this area is going to lead into the industrial zone. So it's very key that we get this the way it should be. Remove those traffic lights. And again, it does the markings and continuous medians do appear to be a thing or at least continuous lines the medians didn't but the uh yellow median line uh did which is so cool to see another cool thing in the roads tab is alleyways are a thing i don't mess with them too much yet when i get to doing a vancouver build for the first time in this game you better believe we're going hard on the alleys but seeing that alleyways are a thing in the game now is so cool and i know so many people are going to rejoice over that we place down the road maintenance depot and here come the vehicles. Once again, we add the upgrades. It's another building that can be upgraded. Sends out a whole heck ton of them, eh? Look at the fleet. All the vehicles too, all the vehicles, all the buildings, everything looks so much more realistic. Oh, there it is, using the meta to hit my goal. We were limited to 30 minutes, being a slow player, a slow detailer, this wind turbine trick is very, very useful for me. We're gonna go ahead and unlock, I think, surface parking? Recycling center, good call, Moose. I'm surprised that I didn't go with surface parking, this being a small town. Parking is integral to walkable cities, probably. Although I hear City Planner plays screaming when I said that. Um, anyways, coming in and we're going to place down our elementary school and try to find a good little spot for the elementary school here. I think I settle on it being... Or do I draw out the roads? Yeah, yeah, good call. Good call, past Moose. Let's draw out the roads. It felt a little bit too close to the clinic there. I want the school to stand on its own a little bit more. 
I'm going to come out here and draw out the grid and get that uh, sorted out there. But as you can see with that other road, how it broke the grid, I do find... Again, it's been a while since I played with zoning, but I do find in City Skylines 2 that the zone, uh, the grid, sorry, seems to break a lot easier uh, than my experiences in City Skylines 1. Uh, it's been a while, so I, I could be wrong there. Um, but from what I remember, I played console for a year. Um, it does seem like the road breaks it better, but the road tools are so much nicer that, eh, it doesn't really phase me too much. So we're going to come in here, turn off traffic lights, and we're going to turn off the crosswalks. And look at how beautiful that is. Rounded curbs or add the crosswalks back in and it does a curb cutout. Absolutely gorgeous. That is such a cool thing to have in the game. So, so, so cool. And you can add stoplights, no left turn, no right turn, trees, all of that good stuff with the road services. That's why I'd suggest to players when you get your hands on City Skylines 2... I would suggest if you like pretty things or you like, you know, traffic flow, unlock that road services toolbar right away. And you can do that right away from Tiny Village. So we're coming in here with some high density to start shaping our downtown that's going to sit right around this clinic here and serve as a cool backdrop to the water tower by not going with buildings that are too, too tall there. I think it creates a really, really cool backdrop for this city. We're going to come in with more low density residential, more suburban homes around here. I think I went a little bit. Yeah, maybe it works there. I feel like those homes might be a little bit too close. Might come in with some more high density residential there, but I don't know. Maybe it's not too bad at all. I think, you know, it, it'll probably work. <laughs> Again, it's so cool that all the assets just come pre-detailed. It's so, so useful. I noticed while I was drawing that road that traffic was stopping here, and that's because it added traffic lights. So let's come in, get that sorted, remove the crosswalks. Let's get good traffic flow through here. So far, again, I talk about this in the uh, live play that'll be coming very soon. But so far, the game seems to handle traffic pretty well. We have a small population, sure. I'd be curious to see how it goes as it progresses, but I am very satisfied with how the game seems to be dealing with traffic so far and the options that they give you to help handle that. Here we come with the recycling center and you know what's going to happen. We got... Oh, did we get large village? Let's go. Large village. Heck yeah. So we get three more points for our tree. Going to come in and upgrades. The buildings are freaking gorgeous. Like, look at how well done they are. And the traffic AI is a big one for people. I found the traffic AI to be so, so good in this one compared. Where I was actually, like, I don't know if you just heard what I said. Traffic AI is good. Crazy, right? Isn't that a crazy thing to say? I'm so impressed with the traffic AI. And we'll showcase more as it progresses. I haven't had accidents in this one yet on this playthrough, but the accidents are wild. They are really interesting to see. And the fact that police get dispatched and fire, oh, it's so, so cool. This firehouse asset I am in love with. It's beautiful. We can upgrade it at a bay. It's such a good small town asset. Absolutely stunning. We're going to come in now with the, I believe this is the, oh, police. I thought it was the elementary school for a second. Police. And I found a cool spot for it there where it gives that road that comes into it reason to just end. Otherwise, the two roads there would have been too close together by the recycling center. So we give it a cool reason to end with a gorgeous historical police station there. And now we're going to come in and go crazy with the residential, the suburbs, because we're getting close here, you know, 18 minutes deep. We're getting close to that end point. It was interesting working with time constraints. I'm not the biggest fan, <laughs> but it was a cool challenge trying to uh, trying to make it work for somebody who's a hardcore detailer and hardcore mod lover. It was quite the challenge, but we got it and we're here. Coming in with more suburban zoning, and I realized that probably that first spot I did would be commercial. So we're going to come in and remove that and eventually add commercial to it. I really like the crane animations as well, too, that come when the buildings are zoned and growing. What am I going to select here? Oh, surface parking. We had one extra token as well, and that's for the welfare office. So I decided for the welfare office... 
Now, there is a City Hall asset, so probably I should place that instead. Um, actually, you know what? That's a separate topic, because here's parking. Let's talk about parking. Assets, super cool. Love the way, uh, love the parking assets that we get. Um, I think they look absolutely gorgeous. Such, such cool buildings. Um, and again, the, it comes back to the AI. The way that the AI interacts within parking lots, like... I saw a vehicle reverse out of a spot perfectly, back up, avoid other vehicles, and leave. I haven't seen vehicles clipping through each other. I haven't seen vehicles clipping through sims. It is so refreshing. And it, like, oh man, it is got to be the coolest. They nailed the, the uh, traffic AI. And AI as a whole, the sims, like, the whole simulation feels so alive so realistic it, they have absolutely nailed this and this game in the next two to three years is gonna be unreal when the modding scene gets a hold of it and asset creators have built up their catalogs my god it, this game really is set up for years and years of success look at that roundabout too isn't that cool boom plopped the roundabout and it's done and it marked it it marked it look at that dragged the road out it added markings how cool is that so useful. So here's the alleyway road, and I'm using it in not an alley. <laughs> this will eventually be the city hall, but I placed down the welfare office, or I'm pretty sure I do the welfare office. Yeah, okay, almost in high school, eh? Ah, high school would have looked cool too. The welfare building is cool, but it's a very generic, I love it for this, by the way, a generic looking office building. And I think it would look better closer to those higher density apartment buildings. So that's something that um, you can move the buildings, right? Like you could, you can relocate a building. So I think that's something I'm going to go for. So here we are with the trees and we talked about this earlier on, but trees have a life cycle. So notice how I'm planting the trees. They start as baby trees planting little baby trees and they will over the course of gameplay grow into full large scale trees it's interesting i really hope they add an option to plant them full grown for us detailers but this is a really cool gameplay mechanic and something that i know a lot of people are going to enjoy quite a bit so it's very very unique it was an interesting approach i i i think i like it i think i do like it you know but here I come in because the goal is to hit Grand Village this episode, and we do it. The power of wind turbines. So we smash that goal. We got to Grand Village, and now comes everybody's favorite part. I'm going to wrap up, and I'm going to connect with all of you in the live play. So here we are in Old Monroe. Hope you all have been enjoying the video so far. And if you want to stay up to date on everything City Skylines, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a video here. Really happy with this starting layout and I'm really happy with this highway that we've got coming through as well. Feels really similar to home while still handling traffic fairly well. We're still very early, 403 people and we don't have industry zoned yet. Um, so that will obviously factor in, but it's, uh, I mean, it seems to be handling it pretty decently and this will obviously help a lot. Um, I'm going to have to turn off the <laughs> park in there, but yeah, the idea behind this is this street here. So Ivy street gets priority, right? The highway that cuts through, they get priority over everything. Obviously at lights, it's a fair game. Everybody, you know, has to wait at the lights, uh, but you want to add this stuff in, right? So that it's not constantly backed up with lights. So one where they get priority. Um, and typically what you'd have as well too is like a turning lane that's maybe attached to a light, um, but unfortunately we don't have that. So with the assets that we do have, this allows uh, perfect flow for Ivy Street and then on and off ramps. And you could do the same to this side here. So you could do one there, you could do one over here. Um, but yeah, that'll help a lot with the traffic. And it, again, it seems to be handling decently so far. So there it is. There's a view with the mountains too, like that looks gorgeous. There's something off in the distance too, eh? I don't know. Oh, we can click it. It's a barn. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's a pine tree. Nice. 
<laughs> uh, I want to hear from all of you. What do you guys want to see in a part two? Uh, I went into this kind of blind, right? Just doing what I think is cool and, and showing it off as the best we can. The 30 minute time frame was a bit of a bummer. It really restricted the content. Um, I know uh, for a lot of people, myself included. Um, so it'd be really cool if we can get a little bit longer time frame. But yeah, right now we're limited to 30 minute videos. Um, so let me know. Let me know in the comments below. What do you want to see in the next video? What would you like to see me build? What would you like to see um, showcased more? And uh, that'll all be coming. I'll take all of your comments into consideration when I frame out uh, the, the second part, part two. Um, really loving the assets though. Like these, like that looks really cool. Like if we come down here, Dude, I think that's going to look really cool. If we keep this sight line preserved, water tower, mountains, the apartment buildings. Like, I think the idea is that the water tower is going to be the biggest thing here. Beautiful forest fire. It really is the Okanagan, eh? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'm super happy with this. Uh, thanks so much to everybody who's uh, checked out the video and made it to this point in the video. I'm a Canadian moose, and if you're looking for anything City Skylines related, this is the place for you. Like, comment, subscribe. I want to hear from all of you. And I'll catch you in the next episode.